Hi, Mr. Cosy here. In this video, we'll create curve stitching patterns. Sometimes they're called string art. That goes away back to the 1970s. And in mathematics, they're called envelopes of curves. And I'm going to use an extension in Inkscape called Interpolate as a basis for creating these patterns. Now, those unfamiliar with Inkscape, it's a free open source vector editor. If you Google Inkscape, go to their website, you'll be able to download the latest version. And in this video, I'm going to be using Inkscape 1.0.2, and it's the native Mac version. So key combinations that I'll be using and mentioning may well be different if you're using, say, a Windows version or an older Mac version of the software. So let's get started. When you first open Inkscape, this is what you get, a fresh page. Now there's a couple of adjustments I want to make. If you press one on your keyboard. It zooms in. Now this ensures that we're both seeing the same thickness for lines. This zoom is actually a hundred percent zoom, which means that one pixel in Inkscape corresponds to one pixel on your display. Second thing, we'll get rid of these borders, page borders. We do that by going to the File menu, Document Properties, and uncheck the show page border box and they've disappeared. So we're ready to begin. We're going to explore an extension called Interpolate and we'll use the Bezier tool. One click, another click, spacebar and there's a line. Now so that your line looks the same colour and thickness as my line Click on the stroke box down here, and in this, maneuver the colour. I'm using the, uh, what do you call it, the wheel. Uh, maneuver it so that it's black, and click stroke style, pixels, and make sure you're on two. And that ensures that we're both looking at the same thing. So let's close that window down. So there's our first line. And we'll note using the nodes tool, if I select that, that that line consists of a path with a node at either end. Now if you tap on the tab button, you'll notice that this node is highlighted. That's the first node. Tap again. This node is now highlighted. That's the second node. Now let's unselect that and go back to the Bezier tool. And let's do two separate lines, or two lines joined. Spacebar again. And this time, let's look at the nodes tool, click the nodes tool, and this time if we press the tab key, there's the first node, down here, press it again, the second node, and down here we have a third node this time. So let's deselect all that, and let's select both of these paths, and go to the extensions menu, generate from path, interpolate and a box should appear. Make sure the exponent is at zero. Interpolation steps, I've got that at 20, that should do. Interpolation method two and the duplicate end paths is checked. Neither of these boxes should be checked and let's just apply that. And there's the result. What happens is that this first line we drew is morphed into the second line that we drew with 20 intermediate steps. Now we can grab that and you'll notice that the first line that we drew and the second pair of lines that we drew are intact. They're still there and we've got a grouped bunch 
we look down in, in the description down here, it's a group of 22 objects in the layer. So we have 22 objects, the 20 in between morphing from one to the other and then the originals on the outside. So that's how the interpolate extension works. So let's continue our exploration of this interpolate extension. Let's select the second pair of lines that we drew and flip them vertically. And let's do an interpolation again from the first line to the second pair of lines. Extension. Generate from path. Interpolate. All the settings should be the same and we'll apply that. Now, this is rather surprising. What's going on here? Let's move this whole result over here and just examine this second pair of lines with the nodes tool. And if we press this time the tab button again, then the first node is not there. It's now down there. And that's because we flipped uh, the pair of lines vertically. So the first node is there. If we press tab again, that's the second node. And this time the third node, the last node, is at the top. And what interpolate does is takes the first node and makes sure that it morphs into the first node here. And this last node will morph into the last node on this second pair of lines. And that's why we get this convoluted looking result, because this first node morphs into this first mode node, and this last node morphs into this last node. And there's complications in the middle because we've had a third, a middle node in, in the second pair of lines that we drew. So let's start our curve stitching activities. So let's remove all these experiments and let's start again with the Bezier tool. And this time I'm going to hold the control key down. There's one click. Hold the control key down and that locks the line into the vertical. Another click and then space bar. So we have a line and let's do a command D to duplicate that. And I'm now holding the shift key down with the right hand arrow. So that moves it along. And let's do a clockwise rotation on that line. And making sure that this key, well this button is grayed, that's a snap button. Let's snap that to the bottom of the other line. And we'll select them both and do our interpolation on that. So extension, generate from path, interpolate, and settings are the same as before. And let's see if we can explain what's gone on. If we look down, let's just grab that and move it. If we look down at this second line and use the node tool and press the tab button, you can see the first node is here and on the original line, of course, the first node was up here. So it's morphing from that first node down to that first node. The second node coincide with each other, which is why we get the pattern we get. Now, if we now switch that bottom line horizontally, let's select it. 
and there's the horizontal flip and just check what's going on now with the nodes tool, press tab there's the first node there's the second node so the first node here will map to the first node here and the second node in the vertical line will map to the second node here and all the in-between morphs should eventually look like our curve stitching pattern. So let's do that. Extension, generate from path, interpolate, apply that. And there's our typical curve stitching pattern. And that's the element just now that we're going to use to build more complicated diagrams. So I'll now zoom out a bit with a minus key. And we'll command D, duplicate that element. Let's duplicate it again. And this time flip it horizontally. And then shift left arrow. Move it to the left. Now, we do want this to snap correctly together. So let's zoom in. Make sure again the snap uh, button is grayed. And we can just move it to where we hope it'll snap. And it should indeed snap correctly. And then let's select these two. And let's duplicate them. And let's flip vertically. And we'll grab that, move it down. And there it snaps together. And we've got that wonderful basis for a curve stitching pattern. Let's do a command G, which groups that. It's now one object. Command D, duplicate that again. And take these two, duplicate them, and combine them together. And then the last step, let's command G to group these. And this time, we're going to go to the to the Preferences menu. And under Behaviour, go to the Steps. And in the Steps, look at the Rotation Snaps every... And I have that now set at 30 degrees. I'm going to change that to 45 degrees and close that and we'll take this whole object I can't remember now if I duplicated it no I didn't so let's do a command D click it again and hold the control key down to allow the rotation to go in steps of 45 degrees if you don't hold the control key down, you have a free rotation. But holding the control key down, we've set it to steps of 45. And there's a rather nice pattern emerging. In part two of the video series, we'll look at using the polygon tool to create more elaborate patterns. That's Mr. Corsi signing out and hope you enjoyed the video. Mm -hmm.